All right, well, welcome back to Otaku News Live for the week ending September 25th, 2011, where I am here with Rising Zan. How are you doing, Zan? I'm doing good. How are you, everyone? And welcome to Otaku News Live. Let's get this show on the road. Absolutely. So we're starting out with probably the biggest news story of the week. The writer of Madoka Magica has revealed that it may not actually be over, much to the shock of the interviewer, <laughs> who was, uh, 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 what? Yeah. And his <laughs> response was basically, well, he feels that there's there's more story to tell. It's like he hasn't, he's not quite done yet. So, I, I'm quite in- intrigued. Yeah, well, um, uh, there is a lot of, like, uh, uh, not enough character, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not enough character progression really seen in the series, because they're kind of, Mm-hmm. all building up the whole, like, oh, being a magical girl isn't all that's cracked up to be kind of <laughs> plot line. And mm-hmm. kind of a lot of the character's development is basically crammed into these little flashback sections. And not mm-hmm. enough of the um, uh, the connection, really. Like, for example, uh, I believe Mommy, the uh, gun-toting magical girl, we don't see yeah. much of her character, because we are mm-hmm. in the series. Uh, <laughs> but, uh Yeah. Let's for that reason, uh, we we do get a lot of in depth like why they are the way they are, but mm. some more can be seen. Um, however, in the interview, um, uh, what it seems to be going, what he seems to be wants to go, what he seems to want to go for is um uh, like a parallel world, like focusing more yeah. on maybe their day uh, everyday life, so less magical girl, more slice of life. Mm-hmm. It also sounds like, as you were saying, it could be a lot more um, uh, backstory, you know, building up yeah. to that. So, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, that and a lot of their um, uh, their backstory pretty much ended up being, oh, my life sucked, so Hubei came along and magical wishes everywhere, but didn't mm. turn out to be as was planned. <laughs> but I'm exactly. sure I'm uh, more Madoka Magica will be definitely well more appreciated, especially since I'm uh, Madoka Magica is getting dubbed over here in America. Right? Yeah. So that'll, that'll be a good thing to, to uh, you know, hopefully get some money going their way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Look forward to that. And uh, heck, they could do the trigun thing. You know, oh. everyone <laughs> back. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we'll see. Um, um, also in Madoka Magica News, this is kind of fun, um, they put, which of the characters, uh, Kyoko was on a poster yep. for Guide Dogs, mm-hmm. uh, this, this uh, Seeing Eye Dog uh, uh, organization put that up, let me show that on the live live feed, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's just it's nice seeing they did some, used some Madoka art. Yeah, um, it's been a while since I've watched the series, but um, I Somehow, I think that I remember once that Kyoko was with them, like an animal or a dog. Maybe it's just a mm. picture, because yeah. But um, uh, uh, Kyoko usually seen the series as the uh, kind of tough one of the uh, of the magical mm. girls. More um, uh, like she's been up through a bit much, and she shows it uh, mm. a little more thorny at first, but she opens up eventually. And she's also seen for mm. eating a lot of sweets and a lot of pockies. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, but nice to see her in a different light, and also it shows you that Madoka Magica is just that popular. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of popular series that might get some more material, Shaman King will be returning mm-hmm. in a with a new short manga in November. Um, volume 4 of Jump X, or Jump Kai, uh, mm-hmm. announced that there will be a new 44-page story for... Uh, for Shaman King, done by Hiroyuki Yuki Takei, mm-hmm. uh, with some color opening uh, pages, and will we'll depict a previously untold zero story about Yo. So exciting and uh, ah. kind of surprising to seeing that they're coming back. Mm, so a pre-story on Shaman King. Huh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I only watched so much. Uh, watched, uh, read so much Shaman King. I read the first a bit, the first volume, the third volume, and a little bit of the whole Shaman Tournament saga. Hmm. Um, not yeah, too much of that. I think Shaman King had, like, a relatively short uh, run, like, I think 100, 200 chapters. Yeah, it, it was not that long. I think I got up to 20 volumes or so. Um, yeah, that's I not that like right. Volume 9. 
something like that. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, according to the magazine, this short is leading up to a, quote, big project, end quote, coming next spring. Hmm, very intriguing. Yeah, of course. Yes. Maybe they're going to be doing a uh, uh, Dragon Ball GT thing. Mm, ah. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? You know, hmm? certainly those sorts of shonen titles make money. Yeah, I, I wouldn't expect that Shaolin King. Like, Shaolin King kind of yeah. went and came, at least for me. Mm. Like, it wasn't, like, one of the ones that really made you think. Like, it was, it, mm. it was like Jojo's Bizarre Adventure with stands, but that you can talk to them. So they're kind of like Pokemon, mm. or Digimon, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like Shaolin King a lot, but uh, it's one of those things, that, like you say, it kind of came and went. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of something that did not come and go, Pokemon, as we all know, is a really huge thing. Speaking of that, the TV Tokyo is giving, a, giving away 7,777 Pikachu-themed TV remote controls. <laughs> I'm not making this up. Um, here's what they look like. Let me just try to zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire thing. Uh, yeah, it's kind of weird that yeah. we've got these full-scale remotes that they're going to give yeah. away. Um not only are they themed that way, if you press the buttons, you get Pikachu's voice. <laughs> That's nice quality. Um, yeah. But also, they're, they're, you should, I, to make a correction, they're giving away 777,000 Channel 7 Pikachu uh, remotes, because uh, TV Tokyo is on Channel 7. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, mm. And Pokemon Best Switches airs on TV Tokyo at 7 p.m., so yeah. there we go. Yeah. Kind of an interesting sort of giveaway, though. Mm, uh, well, uh, advertisements, advertisement, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Why not? <laughs> uh, let's see here. So, what's an odd thing from Clamp? Which, imagine that. An odd thing from Clamp. No, <laughs> can't imagine. Um, so, there's this Clamp Festival Tokyo 2011 event, and it will stream various events, Sweetie, the all-girl band will be there, cosplay events, so forth and so, and so on. Um, and it's going to stream live on mm. the Internet. Um, all you need is a registered account at nikonico.com, which is actually has English language, so you can actually do that um, to log into Niko Niko Doga. And they're going to have the entire thing out, um, which I believe uh, happened yesterday. Hmm. Interesting. The, the so story. it's kind of like a um, uh, like an online clamp uh, press summit, maybe? Like to show off their newest know. anime and manga lineup? It, I'm, I don't... It, it's, it's strange. I mean, they're going to have this band. They'll have a cosplay event. Okay. Um, they'll host voice actors, live concerts, discussion panels. It's basically a clamp mini-con. Oh. Huh. But is it only online? Or is it also in person? I don't know. I would think it would have to be um, in person. I mean, it would be awkward if it was just online. You were basically just staring at cameras. Yeah. Could be, though. <laughs> Especially Clamp being what they are. You know, they, they, there's a, a certain amount of uh, control over the material. Um, hard to say. They'll also be premiering a new manga there. So that'll be a big thing, I'm sure. Um, <coughs> which, will, which has already uh, uh, been announced. We'll have an anime adaptation Headed by yeah. the director of Tiger and Bunny. Yeah, uh, Keiichi Salto. Uh, it's yeah. from one of Clamp's uh, new new original manga, and they're debuting it at the festival. Um, right. Yeah, if, if the uh, poster is anything to go by, there seems to be a picture of a, a blonde bishi school boy, you know, tie and red, and a mm-hmm. shorter girl. But I think those are just the mascots, honestly. Yeah, I mean... yeah. There's no way of knowing what they'll actually have there. Yeah. So, uh, Clamp, you like it? Go get it translated and find out what the hell they're saying. <laughs> That's the problem. But it is cool that they're streaming it live, so anyone oh, yeah, can know. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anyone can, can watch it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, in sort of odd news, we wanted to mention the fact that <laughs> Apple C13 uh, is getting a manga. So there was the Apple Seed manga done by um, Matsumoni Shiro, and then they made this anime adaptation, and so now they're going to do a manga adaptation of the anime adaptation, which 
Mm, so the dog, the cow, the chase, the cat, the cat, the child, the child, with the jack house, jack built. Exactly. Um, and it, it, it's not even being done by um, uh, Shiro. So, hmm. I, strange. So it's a new manga not done by the original creator? Exactly. So did they get permission from him? I'm sure they did. Hmm. I mean, last minute Shiro is enough. Maybe they're attempting to try and ride the wave of Apple 13? Yeah, that could be, and it could be they have their own story to tell, and mm-hmm. Masumi Shiro is just like, you know, I'm not going to draw that, I just don't have any interest in that, but go ahead, if you want to go, yeah. go do that. I'll, I'll, I'll accept the royalties. Yeah, didn't the, um, uh, the Appleseed manga get turned into a, a movie or an OVA, then an anime, now a manga? <laughs> yeah, so there's the original OVA from the 80s or early 90s, then the Appleseed, the two Appleseed movies, okay. and now there's Appleseed 13. <laughs> Um, all of which tell sort of different versions. Yeah, it's complicated. Makes you wonder how they skipped Appleseed 2 through 12. <laughs> well, that's the weird thing, is that so many of these will, 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 will go and they'll like, say, I'm, I'm going to adapt Volume 3. Mm. Okay. Mm. You know, and it, it's structured so that works. Uh, it's sort mm-hmm. of a police procedural kind of a story, and there's some yeah. backstory stuff. So you can do that, but it's just kind of odd. Mm-hmm. So anyway, this is sort of an odd thing. Um, oh yeah, so here's an interesting one. Crunchyroll and TV Tokyo are teaming up to slap folks around for uploading anime to YouTube. Mm, which uh, is already Crunchyroll super nice, though. Honestly, I I, I don't want to yeah. rag on fellow otaku, but. Releasing stuff on YouTube at this day and age, I mean, there's so many other outlets that you can get at. <laughs> I mean, why exactly. YouTube? I, I, okay, I remember back when I was, when uh, the Shippuden anime was barely getting off the ground in Japan, uh, I watched some mm-hmm. of the episodes on YouTube, and mm-hmm. that was because there weren't really any quality, um, uh, uh, what am I thinking about? Dubbing? Uh, no, subbing, uh, subbing mm-hmm. online sites. Ah, uh, there's yeah. Crunchyroll, but Crunchyroll was in the, was still in this weird funk when they were trying to legalize. Uh, mm-hmm. However, but th- after that, I then found all these you know other sites that still kind of do it a little more legally. But even then, I'm probably not going to bother watching the ble- the Naruto and uh, Bleach stuff. <laughs> yeah, so it yeah, seems um, kind of silly to upload on YouTube when there's so many yeah. other outlets. I mean, there's Hulu. Then again, let's just say these guys aren't American. Uh, <laughs> well, and well, you know, like you said, YouTube is such a big target. It's kind of like yeah. it, it's so easy for folks to find yourself on there and and slap you around for it. Um, it's, so basic. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a good idiom for this because I just thought of one. Now it's flipping, yeah. but um, uh, it's like it's like trying to commit. A, um, a grand heist in the middle of uh, Central Square in New York. <laughs> That's what it's like. It's like trying to steal the yeah. huge plasma screen TV in New York Central Station and not get seen. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, you uh, yeah, you weren't going to get now, away with that guy. They, silly. <laughs> yeah. One thing you don't mention here is specifically the sort of scale of who they're going after. Uh, we know that there are that they. They issued the lawsuit against 13 different uploaders, mm-hmm. um, but we don't know... At least better than 1,337 1, from uh, <laughs> what uh, Crunchyroll did previously. No, it was, it was Funimation who, did, who had to do that. That is Funimation, yeah. Yeah. Um, and apparently this is for a, a combination of Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, and Bleach. Bleach. Yeah, I don't even know uh, why they yeah. would upload Naruto. That's the thing, you know, <laughs> like you say, finding episodes of Naruto and Bleach online is not difficult. Yes. So the companies claim that they, quote, lose a customer opportunity, end quote, each time uh, uh, an episode is uploaded illegally. Um, and they mentioned those anime specifically because they mm-hmm. have the online streaming those, rights for that. Those and are the big two in Japan. <laughs> that's a great example. Yeah. They're both on Crunchyroll. Just go on Crunchyroll yeah. and watch them. Yeah, actually, really funny quick story on Mob. Uh, Mm. Uh, I re- recently watched the uh, Gintama movie, which is another show in Jump anime, really big in Japan, but not so big here in America. Um, and it's a- it was actually produced by Warner Brothers. And uh, at the end uh, of the movie, um, uh, 
they basically had basically since Skin Town was a complete fourth fourth wall breaking comedy, they had the Warner mm-hmm. Brothers like a, a two bro, two guys in suits with a W and B up for faces, and it's being like <laughs> we were lied to these. These aren't popular mangas. These are. Hold co- they hold copies of Naruto and Bleach in their hands. <laughs> so it just goes to show you that Japan knows what's popular in America. <laughs> nice. That is very true. All right. Um, moving on to some other streaming news. Uh, Fate Zero, the TV anime series, will be streamed by Anaplex. Uh, 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 on the internet in eight different languages. So subtitled in eight different languages, which is kind of stunning. Um, that'll be in Korean, Chinese, both traditional and simplified, English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. Mm. Wow. Definitely covers all the bases. Yeah. Is um, Fate Zero the one based yeah. off the uh, visual novel? I, that's an excellent, well, I, I know it's uh, based originally off Fate Stay Night. Okay, um, which is the visual novel. Yeah, uh, I don't know if this is actually one of the visual novel stories or if it's original. All right. But yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's a prequel since Fate Zero and Zero kind of usually uh, means prequel or before. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't uh, haven't gotten into that yet. That's another one to get into. Mm-hmm. Another, another one to watch. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Also, ah, so Studio Ghibli's latest film is doing very well, which is notable because any Studio Ghibli film that's not from Hayao Miyazaki is always kind of, eh, it does well, yeah. but whatever. Um, yeah. And the, the most recent one called From Up on Poppy Hill, Koriko, I'm sorry, Kokuriko Zakakara, yeah. um, is now the number one top grossing Japanese film of 2011. And you know what? Yeah, it beats the, the two twin Pokemon movies. Yeah. Which is kind of amazing, even though I still can't imagine <laughs> why Pokemon's still so damn popular. <laughs> like, I know the exactly. games are popular. That makes perfect sense, but I don't know about the anime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, what, what I, it, when I saw this uh, thing, though, what I was amazed was, <laughs> did we count with a new movie? I, I thought the latest yeah. one was um, uh, the, 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 the Borrowers. Like I never, I haven't heard no, this until yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, this is the one by uh, Miyazaki's son Goro. Oh, this is um, this was done film. by Miyazaki. No, uh, Goro Miyazaki. This was this uh, uh, from Poppy Hill was done um, by uh, Goro. Yep. It. Hmm. It said um, uh, after yeah. suggestion the film's writer and planner Hayao Miyazaki. Maybe he didn't direct it, but he said he wrote it and planned it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 that's absolutely correct. Is that he did sort of the and he does this with a lot of the films with Ghibli. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, Koro Miyazaki yeah. directed it. Okay, yeah. All right, that um, makes sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah um, which, which I, kind of makes every Studio Ghibli movie kind of a Hayao Miyazaki movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, What's amazing though is but, this also uh, isn't like an original story from uh, Miyazaki. It's a uh, based off of a uh, manga, uh, coming age right, manga. Doing that, actually. Yeah, and they're doing that more and more. Well, I mean, obviously Kiki's Delivery Service was based on a novel. Oh, wow. Well, um, huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, what, obviously, The Borrowers. Um, yeah, obviously. Uh, but, um, yeah, a lot of those more recent things, Howells, you know, it, it seems they've been doing a lot more adaptations than original. Yeah. Oh, you Grave of the Fireflies was based on a novel. Oh, yeah, that's, that's true, um, yeah. That was a while ago, so, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the other thing, too, is that it makes a lot of sense to find a story that really works for you and mm-hmm. to you know, adapt that. Um, uh, you know, there's just lots of advantages um, to that in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. Also I think it's good for Goro because it gives him something, you know, sort of to grip onto and, and adapt. Yeah. But, uh, see. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, made a total, it's made a total of $55 million U.S. Uh, equipment, yeah. Which is pretty darn cool. Yeah, um, Although, the, difference, the difference between the two uh, Pokemon movies, though, is uh, it made about, about four hundred uh, thousand more. Yeah, they're, they're actually pretty tight, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I think they were a double feature. Yeah, but I can tell this movie just from the push. It looks like it's going to be a bit of a tearjerker. Um, that yeah. usually gets the Japanese pretty well. And honestly, I would I would want to watch this. I would like to watch this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, me too. Um, well. Anything to be, actually anything Goro. 
is, is the thing that intrigued me. So here's a poster real quick for folks who are looking curious about it. So yeah, so nice to see Jubilee's doing well. Uh, moving back over to this side of the U.S., uh, Greg Ayers had some dental problems, and unfortunately he needs a complete rebuild of his dental bridge to fix the damage. Um, it was $10,000 worth to do it. And so, um, Anime Detour, the Minnesota Anime Convention, has put together a donation drive, uh, asking folks to put in some cash to help him with that dental bridge so he will be back to dubbing anime. So, nice thing that the fans step in like that. Mm. Yeah, just for your future voice actors in there, remember to take your teeth or else. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, another nice thing is that they say if, the, if they uh, reach their goal of 10,000 uh, and go over that, they will then find some other anime community, mem- community members in need. So it looks like this is going to become sort of a, a larger charity, which would be nice. Yeah. Uh, another little note, uh, going back over to the Pacific, uh, Tokyo Game Show, uh, uh, was, uh, I believe last week, got a total of 222,600 visitors, um, oh, I'm sorry, visits, uh, that could be the same person multiple times over the various yeah. days, uh, but that's a lot of visits, and, uh, it was, uh, certainly more than, uh, the previous year, which is about 200,000. So that's just getting bigger and bigger, as as Zan said, it's sort of the E3 of Japan. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how long it's uh, gone now. I'm pretty sure it's gone for for a long time, but yeah, that's a lot of mm-hmm. people. Probably a, a lot of them uh, foreigners as well is probably what happened. That's true. Yeah, a lot of them. Um, I heard that there was a lot of them um, uh, foreign press coverage on, on the uh, event. Hmm. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I hope. Japanese games today. All right. Uh, so the interesting anime licensing news. Um, Bandai Visual, actually not licensing, but release. Uh, Bandai Visual has announced that uh, Kyokai Senjo no Horizon, aka Horizon on the Middle of Nowhere, um, will be released on in Blu-ray only. There will be no retail Ooh. DVD release, although a DVD version will be offered for rental shops, which are a fairly big thing over in Japan. Um, but it basically, if you want to buy a copy of, of Horizon, you'll have to get it on Blu-ray. Um, now, of course, we mentioned earlier that uh, uh, anime fans have been buying a lot of Blu-ray. But this is a pretty early jump to, you know, Blu-ray only. Yeah. Well, it is an early jump, but um, uh, that happened with back in the day with uh, DVDs and VHS tapes. Like, you can have Ooh. both, but eventually... Uh, uh, companies just started pushing through um, uh, DVDs, and eventually VHS became thing of the past, just because DVDs, they're a lot more portable, uh, you know, and they're more futuristic, and also eventually DVD players became a lot more portable, and especially, um, uh, it wasn't too recently, but the PS3 uh, dropped a little bit in price, also I think Blu-ray players uh, yeah. have also dropped in price a bit, so yeah, maybe it's time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I remember back, um, gosh, it would be around 2001 or so when Pioneer released uh, Nia Under 7, the anime series, DVD only. And they mm. said basically, you know, uh, that, was, that was fairly early on, but they said, we know we're going to get some folks who don't have DVD players, but it's to that point where it just makes a lot more sense for us not to produce all those VHS tapes. Um, so I guess for this, it's like, okay, you know, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll lose a few folks, but it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So, uh, moving on to some manga news. J. Kami, Ken Akamatsu's uh, comics uh, site, which is uh, devoted primarily to releasing out-of-print manga, although they also do uh, more recent stuff, but they're trying to get that stuff uh, available digitally and for a reasonable price. Uh, they started beta testing for a premium service, which will also distribute adult, boys love, erotic, and violent manga, including out-of-print titles. Um, so that's an interesting jump. They'll certainly get a lot of content. Yeah. Um, because it will also include uh, Dojinji. So that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I guess my question I is... I, I, remember we, I remember we went over this uh, story a while ago as it was just coming out. Yeah. Uh, about mm-hmm. how you can get like Dojinji on this site as well, as well as um, some select uh, actual license series. Uh, mm-hmm. And you know, it seems uh, by violent manga, do they mean like sh- sanin or like battle sanin? I don't know. 
Um, I'm mm. assuming that the, the the main version of the site is sort of PG-13. Mm. So the idea is this will allow them to do stuff that's, you know, people getting their arms ripped off and organs and blood and so forth, which could be, you know, aimed at teens. Well, um, PG-13, kind of not so much. Um, that's still like shown in well, area yeah. for Japan. Right, yeah. Um, so I, I guess it depends on, and this is one of the other interesting things about this, is that uh, it depends on what they feel is appropriate to put on their main site. Yeah, yeah, private site, definitely. So they, they don't have to, you know, put whatever they, whatever they don't want to. So it could be that they said, we're not going to do super violent stuff on the main site. Mm, that could be. Yeah. Mm. Um, the other surprising thing is that um, for the beta test uh, of the service, uh, of this, this premium service, uh, the, the fee is 105 yen a month. 105 yen. It's like about 40. Mm, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, for you know yeah. one month. I mean, that's that's darn cheap. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and they've said that, uh, uh, the main reason for this really is just to prevent miners from getting in there. Uh, you yeah. have to use a credit card, so that kind of keeps a 12-year-old from getting in. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, if nothing else, good to see that that service is, is evolving. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, moving on to Halloween news. It's getting closer, and Hot Topics cost- costumes have come out, including a Sailor Moon costume. And as we all know, this is exactly what Sailor Moon looks like. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, I and... Have- and- Go ahead. Go ahead. Not to be, I don't know, racist, but um, it almost looks like they, they, they tried to find the most um, skin color appropriate model <laughs> without looking at anything else. It just, I, uh, I don't know. Well, the, the sad part is they aren't even wearing it right. Like, uh, the tiara is supposed mm. to go over the forehead. Then again, uh, I'll True. be the first to admit that... Uh, not everyone has, you know, big ass foreheads. And again, I don't know. He's yeah. kind of has a big forehead, so yeah, you can still do that. Yeah, able to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On the plus side, at least some um, uh, some uh, cosplay makers don't have to like make the uniform themselves. They can just buy this. <laughs> God, yeah, it, it, the it, it does look retail for sixty bucks. <clears throat> oh my okay. gosh. Yeah, which I mean, to be fair, you know, for, for a decent Halloween costume, that's not ridiculous. Um, well, but I hope the TRS is made out of um, uh, foam then, mm, like yeah. they usually are for Halloween costumes. That's true. Yeah. Um, I'm sure this is aimed directly at the, you know, <laughs> the manga and anime fan market. You know, they're aiming at otaku, not the the general. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's what they've be, begun to do with um, uh, Halloween costumes. Right? Like they started to have a uh, Mario yeah. character uh, Halloween costume. True. Uh, was there was there even a Ho- Hello Kitty <laughs> and a Hello <laughs> Kitty costume? And it's not about the, uh, that the fact that there's a Hello Kitty costume. The strange fact is that Hello Kitty anime has never been on American shores, at least as far as I can remember. Yeah. Like, they sell the merchandise. They sell all that. But not one... Okay, Hell Hello Kitty Games, I completely remember. But not mm-hmm. the anime series. Because originally it was an anime. Yeah. I think it was actually a manga before that. It wasn't an anime before that. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> why Sailor Moon now all of a sudden, though. I mean, probably for the next yeah, deal. The only thing I can imagine is because the manga was recently released. Oh, um, yeah, yeah it was recently released. Like last oh. week. Um, which is kind of a thin reason to release a costume, um, yeah. but maybe it's kind of like, eh, it's easy. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm currently looking at Hot Topic to see if I can find that particular costume, but I don't see it on there just yet. They have very Hello Kitty mm-hmm. stuff, but not yeah. obvious uh, Hello Kitty thing. I don't know why a Hello Kitty costume. costume. I've never seen the anime. I'm, uh, if, yeah. if the fan, if the, if the, if the, if the, if the, if the uh, if anyone else has seen the Hello Kitty anime ever put on American Shores or even just English speaking Shores, tell me because I don't, I don't remember that games. I remember I remember all that stuff. Of course, the merchandise, the Hello Kitty lipstick, lip gloss, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I remember that I, I, stuff. I, I, I don't know. ever remember the anime coming on shore ever. I, I, um, I, I, the anime was licensed and released on DVD. Oh, was it? Whichever. 
Uh, yeah, I think Pioneer, one of one of those released, you know, 20 episodes or something on DVD. Um, and I think that might have been it. Because I, 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 I know I've seen Hello Kitty, um, you know, I, I've seen parents buying Hello Kitty. And I suspect mm. that it's one of those series that folks get and recommend, and there's just a, a small groundswell of people who've seen it. Mm. Because it's good for kids. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, um, I personally like Japanese um, uh, kid shows a little bit more than well. It depends what you're ca- talking about kid shows. Because when I think kid shows, yeah. I'm like, I'm thinking like five year and up, and uh, like for mm-hmm. example, Blue's Clues, or it's basically yeah. they wait five seconds for the toddler to yell at the screen, giving them the answer. Right. Yeah, it's not exactly the best pro- uh, programming, I would say. Not particularly intellectually stimulating for the rest of us. Yeah. Um, let me see if I can show you a quick screenshot of the Hello Kitty costume, which is kind of... It's interesting, because it's not quite a Hello Kitty costume. Um, cool. it's, it's a pink s- skirt with a white top with Hello Kitty's face on it. Huh. It's just kind of odd. Uh, I need to look at that then. Uh, yeah. Where can I find a link? Yeah, if you go to Wait. hottopic.com and search for Hello Kitty. All right. It'll be there. But, uh, yeah, just kind of kind of strange. Okay, uh, one other little bit. Uh, I'm moving into games news. A couple other little bits, actually. But, um, so Final Fantasy VII 2, which is, I'm sorry, a dumb name. But what else can you do? You know, it's... it's and they did it before once with Final Fantasy X2, which is still yeah. labeled as one of the stupidest, uh, the worst <laughs> games uh, Square Enix ever put out for the Final Fantasy series. Um, True. A lot of people ragged on Final Fantasy XIII uh, for, you know, mm-hmm. being linear and, oh, cutscenes are too mm-hmm. long. But honestly, I, 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 I loved the combat system for it. It was, very, it was like, very, like, uh, dynamic, kind of like, pulling, like, okay, hit, hit, go, hit, like, very combo-based. And it actually had a mm-hmm. lot of strategy to it, unlike a couple of the other Halloween, uh, a couple of <laughs> a couple of the other Final Fantasy games. Yeah, so uh, Final Fantasy thirteen two. I'm sorry, I said seven. I meant thirteen. Uh, thirteen two will be released uh, January thirty first in the U S. Uh, and then February third in Europe. And this is uh, only uh, about a month and a half after its official Japanese release, uh, mm. which I think is just kind of cool considering how it used to be, you know, six months, a year, year and a half. Before yeah, it was well, over here in Japan or in America, yeah. so uh, and, um, uh, you know, hang on a second, let us new story. It might have been because I'm um, uh, uh, with Final Fantasy uh, 13 the original. We didn't get mm. that for about more like a little bit over six months, I think, or even longer than that. Mm-hmm. I don't remember since uh, yeah, but like uh, like Japan got it, and then um, uh, at E3 they released Final Fantasy 14, and everyone was pissed off. We haven't even gotten Final Fantasy 13 yet, and you're showing us this. <laughs> <laughs> What's even worse is I'm um, uh, uh, I'm no I'm pro- I'm probably wrong, but I think they were actually released Final Fantasy 14 before they released Final Fantasy 13 in American in uh, Western <laughs> Shores. <laughs> yeah, that and oh sense. boy, actually I think oh. I actually may, might retract my previous statement. I think Final Fantasy 14 is the worst game they ever released. Okay, <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a mix up because on one hand you have really crude and bad fan service, and on the other hand you have a really terrible new telling of an MMO. Ah, okay. Yeah, so both are kind of... It's hard to balance both out, but uh, I can see what they're doing. Um, Final Fantasy XIII 2, which is a sequel, new character designs and themes from what I've heard. Uh, oh, yeah. and also they now have quick time events. Hope you do. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, it'll, I think it'll work for Final Fantasy XIII. I don't see why not. Yeah. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Um... It's Final Fantasy. Folks will buy it. Uh, so moving on, uh, here's just kind of an odd one. Um, TV Tokyo has announced they're going to launch Bantai Kan TV Kido Senshi Gundam Dai 07 Itakuri Shotai. Yeah, I think I somehow uh, uh, referred to this once. It's like, it's like they now have like um, uh, the strategy game of, um, uh, uh, Gun- of Gundam. They have like different guns they put on cards. Because the Japanese arcades now are famous, are now doing like this card system where you have like these cards you can buy in stores, and then you um, uh, put them down on the, on the special arcade um, uh, playing field, and uh, yeah, that's what you do now. At least yeah, for c- the, certain uh, games, uh, of course. Now, I think this one is, uh, if I'm remembering the feeling of Bond's uh, uh, a game, it is a, th- a first-person action game 
Um, but you do yeah. get cards, and they actually save your pilot data. Oh. They're basically like a, a badge. Um, so you put it in, in, into the into the game. It identifies you, and then your your status is is stored. Um, mm. The other nice thing actually is that all the uh, pods are networked together, so you can actually play live with other players anywhere else in any of the other arcades throughout Japan. So this TV series, um, Bantai Kan TV Kido Senshi Gundam Dai O Seven Itakura Shotai, mm. is uh, um, a weekly televised competition where people play the game. Yeah. Um, and they're going to have uh, Impulse, the comedy duo, and other folks competing against various teams um, playing the game. Um, and they're now going to have very special guests and so forth. Um, I'm, sur- I'm sure they'll get some voice actors from Gundam in there. But I-, I can't recall the last time I've heard of a TV series where the whole idea is to play a video game, you know, every well, week not against TV different series, people. More, more like a game show, probably. Um, it seems yeah, to me, really. yeah, it's, what they're doing is like they're kind of like a showing it like um, they're having a match and they have like a kind of like a spectator mode but they're now showing the yeah. game. So I I think it's uh, fully capable. I mean, honestly, Japanese game shows are some of the most exciting game shows I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Ninja true. Warrior. Um, um, uh, ooh, I can't remember that other one that was really good. Um, uh, Ultimate, uh, uh, Ultimate Benza. Ban, uh, well, I, don't, I think Bonzo is an English one that has a Japanese game show twist to it. Mm. Um Still, so if you look at the uh, the, um, uh, the screenshot they have uh, on the site, I love the whole um, uh, yeah. original mobile suit um, uh, team they have here. Yeah, it, it's definitely a classic kind of uh, uh, approach. Yeah, uh, that's definitely the. Uh, I, I will definitely um, uh, the, check out the um, uh, uh, like videos for this on YouTube. Yeah, so I, I, I um, think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I mean, it'll be interesting seeing how folks, uh, you know. How they structure the series, you know, how they can make it interesting when you got, you're got certainly going to have folks who have no idea how to play a video game. Um, so how to make well, all that work, um, it's weird. Yeah, that's how they're going to ha- They're probably going to have uh, commentators explaining, like one explains what's going mm-hmm. on, one's for the new fans and one's for the more hardcore base. That's how usually um, uh, MLG commentators work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how, like, pro yeah. work. You have, like, one guy who, like, explains the hand, another guy who, like, explains, mm-hmm. explains the... More, one's for the advanced, one's for the more uh, beginner. Mm-hmm. That's usually how they have games like this become um, uh, really high-end sports. And, you know, it could really work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what's other... What's other <laughs> I mean, tells you how video games are in Japan. Um, one of the players for sort of the home team is called Kabapan, he is a nationally ranked player in the actual video game. And nice. Yeah, they have national rankings for these things. Yeah, why not? I mean, have you heard of Kamisama? Yeah. Sounds familiar. Kamisama basically is um, uh, the best uh, Street Fighter uh, player in Japan, and basically all over he's uh-huh. uh, nicknamed Kamisama. I forgot his actual name, but basically he's like a yeah. master Ryu player. And he's just like yeah. godlike, and he's revered as Kamisama because he's hardly ever beaten, ever. <laughs> He's just that good. Cool. Nice. Yeah, and that's the way. To, and of course, you got all the StarCraft players and so forth. So I, yeah. Why not? All right, and finally, um, let's see here. Production IG, Shaft, and Studio 4C are all going to be animated shorts uh, centered around Kid Icarus. Oh, the new game. Apparently. Yeah, the new uh, Kid Icarus Uprising video game is coming out, and so we're going to get. Shorts from all three of them. Here's a quick, uh, uh, some quick images from that. Just get you a feel for what we're gonna get. Certainly look pretty. And yeah, uh, well, definitely, it'll be uh, only three minutes long, but still. So definitely, I'm uh, pacify some of the fans because uh, I remember a lot of people, mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, both Japan and uh, America, uh, America, uh, Western wise, have been like waiting for this game. It's been pushed back constantly ever since its mm-hmm. um, uh, debut in uh, E3 2000. 10, I believe. I think it was 2010. Mm. Uh, and they were just wow. waiting for it. And it just keeps on getting pushed back because it was like, it was basically released on when uh, the 3DS was debuted. 3DS has been debuted, mm. but it's still being pushed back because uh, pushed back because wow. uh, there's, because uh, uh, how uh, games are still working on it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, um, the, the upright, the characters uprising is kind of like a, um, uh, a, 3D kind of shooter game, or so it seems from the preview shots. 
seems really interesting. You know, definitely a new twist on the Kid Urker series, which used to be just a Metroid ripoff. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I will totally uh, want to check these ones up, though. <laughs> yeah, so, and they're three minutes long. Why not? I mean, heck. yeah. It's actually be interesting to see what an anime studio will do with that. It's like a really compressed time frame. And, you know, usually the TV series, movies, they, they really have some time to establish things. So, I'll be curious. Yeah. Uh, if it's a three-minute animated uh, short, it's probably going to be a lot like an opening. So, I'm uh, yeah, probably not true. a whole lot of dialogue, probably music be, uh, being, taking up most of the audio bits, and uh, being yeah. kind of like, um, like a Gurmlock on Parallel work. Uh, mm-hmm. Like one of those. Basically, where it's just like, there's no vocal dialogue, there's just like, Implied dialogue, but they don't like tell you what they're saying really, uh, and basically music yeah. in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Black Hawk Shooter, basically. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, one um, final thing, which I forgot to mention, uh, the high school light band competition of Japan. Uh, if you've seen K-On, it, those light music clubs, um, there is a national competition, and this year they will be holding that at the actual school that inspired the school in K-On. Mm. So, uh, however, they, they actually managed to, to reserve that, and that's where they're actually going to be doing that. And uh, one of the reasons is that K-On has been mentioned as a series that contributed to a lot of light uh, music clubs being started up or, or expanded at schools, and it's, it's led to something of a resurgence in light music clubs, which I think is a very mm-hmm. cool thing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Any chance to have kids playing more music is a good thing. Definitely. So, yeah. so I think that's it. Um, any other notes? Hmm. That's it. Nothing I can think of. Hmm. Yeah. I think so. Cool. All right. Well, as always, thank you, Zan, for joining us this week. My pleasure. And it was a pleasure to be taking the news to you, everyone. And thank you all for joining us, and we will see you uh, in two weeks. Take care. See you again this week.